Hello. <laughs> hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, Alan. Hi, Jason. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, we don't have a quorum yet, as you can see, or maybe you didn't notice yet, but we're not even close. We need at least two more people. Well, it's just seven o'clock, so let's hold off a couple more minutes. Um, I saw Dick hmm, Sunday at the grocery store, so he knew we had the meeting. Um, I'm assuming Jamie comes. She usually says if she's not. Um, and I hadn't heard from anybody, so. I'm going to call Dick right now. Okay. Jamie's logging in now. Okay. Oh, yep. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Jamie. Not that Dick. Different one. Dick Pippen. But Dick Sullivan could participate in PCC from Florida. What's the difference? Well, he's in Florida, so a little hard. <laughs> Alex says hello. Hi, Alex. <laughs> <clears throat> Jamie, as you can tell, we are not at a quorum yet. So Alan is calling Dick Pippin to see where he is at. Sounds good. Because we just need one more to have a quorum. Hey, Rebecca, call Dick Sullivan. He might be down in Florida. It might be raining. We don't need him for this meeting. He's not on. He's not on the commission. Yeah. Oh, you're the wrong one. I'm sorry. Yep. He's fighting his own. Ah, I'm sorry. Somebody's calling in. Richard Osborne. Hey, Rick. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. The, the Pippins are having technical difficulties, and I'm walking them through it, but if, if we've got enough now, we can start, I guess. Yeah, I mean, do you need to be on the phone to walk them through it? We can just wait another minute. Hey, did you hear from Kurt? to see if he was coming or not coming? No response, dear. Okay. There was an email sent out today again, but. Yep, yeah, I saw Ruben had sent out the email. We'll give it two more minutes. We'll start at 7.05. You have a quorum now, right? Yeah. But, but Dick is trying to jump on, and I know he wanted to participate in the meeting, so. How are you, Alan? Alan is talking to the Pippins, trying to get them online, Rick. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> They're having some technical difficulties. Oh, I see. Yep. We don't have enough quorum yet. Uh, we do. I was just trying to wait for Alan because he would be oh. our 
He would be, make our fourth just so he can participate in the beginning part of the meeting. Sure. Dick Pippen isn't there? No, he's on the phone with Alan. They're trying to get logged in. They've logged in before, oh. so they're just having oh. some other issues tonight, I guess, trying to oh. get in. Push, push the wrong button. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. You could have one of those high tech phones like I have, you know. <laughs> the high tech flip phone that dials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it is 7.05. We do have a quorum. Um, we will get started. Peg, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right. 7.05. I will call this Zoom meeting to order. Um, we will establish a quorum with myself. Alan, Jamie, and Rick Osborne, um, and potentially the Pippins. Um, Hello, this is Kurt. Oh, hi, Kurt. And Kurt is now on the meeting. <laughs> yeah, I uh, was having problems with Zoom, so I decided to call in. That's fine. We were just establishing our quorum because the Pippins are trying to get on, and they were having some issues as well. So maybe it was across the board. So welcome. Um, hi, to Rick. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> um, I would say, do we have any added agenda items? Not that I'm aware of, dear. Good evening. We don't. This is Ruben. Hi, Ruben. Um, yeah. When I talked to Dick at the grocery store, he said he wanted to add something to the agenda, but I couldn't tell you what it was. So yeah. I don't oh. believe it was important. It wasn't for anything. I think it was just logistical things. Um, oh, it was. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. Um, all right, so we will move on to, I would entertain a motion to approve the meeting minutes from May 6, 2020. I'll make a motion, Mr. Rick Osborne, I'll make a motion we approve the minutes of Wednesday, May 6, 2020 minutes. And I second. All right, Kurt seconds. Any discussion on the uh, meeting minutes? Hearing none, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain? Yep, I was just going to ask. I didn't know if you were still on the phone. Alan's going to abstain. He was not here at the last meeting. So those pass, and that is good. All right. First thing on the agenda is new application to be received. 09-2020 Broadbrook Meadows Subdivision, Winbrook Homes, LLC, property at corner of Depot Street and East Road 133 Depot Street. Property owned by Sheila Shiroz. Request for a permit to conduct regulated activities, um, section 4.3 and 5, for a 15 lot residential subdivision. Uh, R3 zone map 99, block 53, lot 05. Who do we have to represent this application? Hi, Jay Ursary with J.R. Russo here representing uh, Winbrook Homes. Uh, this is a residential subdivision, as you, Rebecca had said. It's uh, R3 zone. It's basically at the intersection of East Road and Depot Street, north side of Depot, west side of East Road, a little over 30 acres total parcel area. They're all frontage lots. There's no roadway construction. There are three rear, lot, rear lots. Um, there is no wetland disturbance, however, there's activity within the 150-foot regulated area uh, that consists of some grading, some clearing, and location of septic leach fields and some houses. The total area of disturbance in the regulated area is 0.9 acres, um, and that's located on the lot that's essentially furthest to the west on depot and for this to the north on uh, East Road. Um, soils are good there. These are septic systems. Uh, there is city water on Depot Street, so they'll be tying in. There's none on East Road, so those will be wells. And fairly straightforward. Most of it's in agriculture. It's fairly open. It's uh, been row crop for a number of years, uh, pasture and portions of it on Depot. There's a red barn there down the hollow. I think everybody's probably pretty familiar with it. 
and that's the westerly extent of the property. The wetland is a, associated with a water course that winds through the low area. It starts east of uh, East Road, um, comes under East Road, comes through this property, goes back under Depot Street, and there's a pond there down in the hollow, comes back under again under Depot Street, and eventually finds its way down into Broadbrook and into Broadbrook Pond. So that's the water course that it's uh, associated with. But again, there's no, no wetland disturbance, just about 0.9 acres within the upland review area. So that's a basic overview of the application. And it's gonna stay in that, mainly in that agricultural spot along east? Is that what you were saying? On east, when we get to the furthest lot to the north, there's some clearing the, there's a portion of that last lot that's within the ag area. Okay. And then, and then you start to go down and grade it. And I'm, I know you're familiar with this. You drive down the road going north, you're heading down the hill and you cross the brook at the low point. Yep. There's a little bit of clearing that's associated with the uh, septic leach field and some clearing around the northerly side of the house. So that's the disturbance in that area. The one on depot all the way to the west is all in a wide open field. In fact, uh, that's where the cows had pastured for I don't know, the last number of years or decades that I can remember. And there's a wetland that kind of follows along the, the uh, the woods there, there's no no clearing going on there. It's all within the open field and, and the each field is located within 150 foot of the zoo area. Okay. I didn't see a survey with this, just our um, application paperwork. Yeah, yeah, there were there were plans that were submitted. There's PDFs. I don't know whether you got them or not. Um, no, and, and that was going to be my question is I don't know how we can accept this application. We don't have like we have basically what we would have for an informal discussion and nothing else. We don't have the plan and normally like we would, you know, not to, you know, whatever we normally with a subdivision, a 15 lot subdivision, we would be considering whether or not we need a public hearing. We don't have enough information here to even figure that out. We don't. We don't know if we need a public hearing or should have one or, or not. We don't know what the lot layouts are or where things are going to be. I mean, I don't. In the past, we would never accept this application because there's not. I mean, we like basically have a print off from the town GIS and that's it. Well, the information was submitted. I don't know why you didn't get it. Um, the only thing I guess I would add is that. Typically in the past, it's, it's been the commission's uh, practice not to have public hearings when you had no actual wetlands disturbance, and there is no disturbance here. Uh, there's no activity within the wetland itself. Close, this closest activity to the wetland is over 60 feet away, so. Uh, that, that may be true, but the commission can't see that right now, Jay. I agree. But we did submit it. I don't know why you don't have yeah. it. Sorry about that. So that, so that is my fault. Uh, I did get the PDF. Hey, Brian, can you mute yourself, please? Hello? Thank you. It, Go ahead, Ruben. This is Ruben, um, and that is my fault. Um, Tim Kuhn came in and he uh, sent me the PDF for the drainage and for the application. So that, that's on me. That's my responsibility. I'm sorry about that. Um, I will try to access my um, Office 365 now to see if I can forward you those files, uh, if you allow me to do that. Regardless, we haven't seen it. We haven't been able to review it. So I would say we can't accept this tonight, but my recommendation would be that we have a special meeting either next Wednesday or the following Wednesday to move this along because okay. I don't want to delay them for something that was on our our side. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, we'll do that. All right. Yeah, so like normally we would have a review by Lenny. We'd have comments by Lenny. We'd have, you know, there's a whole package of information besides just the stuff that, that Jay would submit. There, you know, there's a whole bunch that goes into a 15 lot subdivision. We're not seeing any of it. Understood, yeah. 
Uh, Rick Osborne here. Uh, just have one thing. You said wells are going to be on East Road. That's correct. Uh, that are you aware that's an EDB area? Well, we haven't heard anything from the North Central Health Department yet with regard to that, but I expect that yeah. they will comment on that at some point. Because that was an area where the EDB was pretty heavy and uh, uh, the wells were contaminated, uh, you know, for years. So, in that area. So I just pass that along so that you're aware of it. No, uh, we we weren't aware of the fact that there were EDBs in the area, but uh, everything is at the health department, and we expect to get comments back from them with regard to uh, yeah. soils and septics and and wells. Right. Right. Um, if if I might make a suggestion with regard to the application, and I apologize for you not having all the information that you need, would be to potentially just accept the application and understanding that you haven't seen it all and can't make a decision with regard to a public hearing. If you do, when you do get the information, if you decide, and even if it's a month from now that a public hearing is required, um, I understand that and, and we could advertise it. If you have a special meeting and you want to do that, I understand that as well. I'm just trying to, to help move the thing along a little bit. Yeah, That's and right. I agree, and, I, and it's really unfortunate, and I'm sorry about that, Jay, but I think it might be actually better to hold off on accepting and have a special meeting like soon, like as soon as we can get one, and, and just have this on there, and then that way, if we do go the route of a if we, public hearing or whatever, we already get the ball rolling rather than wait a month and decide and then now we got to do all the paperwork for that and the wait for that and the you know I, I think we should just um, do another special meeting you know as soon as we possibly can and and accept this application you know assuming that everything the whole packet is here. Okay, well I understand whatever the commission is most comfortable with certainly that's you know I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, I am too. Not a problem. Um, Jason, I know that you had hidden your camera. I'm not sure if you're still there, but would we be able to have a special meeting for wetlands next Wednesday? I'm not sure how your budgeting and finance stuff is going, if this meeting would be available. You're muted. You're on mute, Jason. <laughs> hey, yeah, that was on purpose. <laughs> um, so uh, right now, I don't see anything, but I'm not 100% sure of that. Okay. Right, I, if, if I just we... want to take one second. Um, I, I was helping uh, Dick get on, and I haven't heard him yet. Dick, I'd do a radio check. Are you there? Yeah, I think they might have X'd out of the actual audio connection. They can hear us, but we're not hearing them. So. Um, I'm going to maybe, you know, anyway, they're, they're, they're not able to talk at this point in time. Okay. Um, oh, they're jumping on. There's Kathy and Dick. Can you guys hear us? Anyway, Jason, can we tentatively have a meeting scheduled for next Wednesday and either use your account or Melissa's account, whoever might be available? Uh, Tentatively, yes. Okay. Um, can we, um, can you look into that for tomorrow, please? Uh, yeah, Ruben can look into it. Okay. Yep. That works too. Um, okay. I send the application and materials for your emails. Yep. I got it. So, um, the other folks who got the paper copies would need to get a hard copy of that as well. Um, so please work that out so they can get that. So if we do have a meeting next week, they will be able to review the file as well. Sure thing. All right. So really sorry, Jay, but we will have a meeting hopefully next Wednesday. Um, we will let you know what happens with that once we find out if the meeting is available. Okay, I understand. Um, just let me know when the meeting might be. If it's of any help, I could if I had addresses, I could mail hard copies to all the members 
um, tomorrow or the day after so that you would have them if that would be of any help. I think Ruben can take care of him in the office. We have the printing printer available. So I think we'll okay. be we'll be okay. But thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. So that will be on hold. Um, moving on, we have no public hearings, no continued public hearings. I'm sorry, Rebecca, do we need to do something about that? Uh, you know, we have a, that piece of business. Do we need to deny it without prejudice at this point in time or table it? Or I, I forget whether you okay. table or postpone till the next one. But well, I don't, I'm not sure the term. You, you postpone it until the next meeting, you table it for the same meeting. All right, so I would entertain a motion to postpone application 9-2020 till our next meeting. So moved. Second. Second by Jamie. Jamie. And, yep, any discussion? All Second. in favor? Osborne. Aye. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Rebecca, I'm sorry, I, I need you people again. I picked up Alan originally, so it was it was Jamie and Rick. Uh, Alan had made the motion and I heard Jamie second at first. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yep, no problem. And All just right. one more time before we go on. Dick, can you hear us? We're not hearing you guys. So I, I would think if I guess we'll just have to go on. Okay. Maybe it would be helpful if they were to dial in. There's a there's a call in number. Yeah, Kathy, why don't you just use the phone and call in on the on the phone on the phone number on the uh, agenda, and that way you'll be able to see and hear. Rebecca, I interrupted you on the vote. Uh, all of those in favor for postponing application nine dash twenty twenty, say aye. 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 Rebecca, Alan, Kurt, Rick, Jamie all said aye. Thank you. We can't hear Dick, so assuming he's abstained. <laughs> um, all right, so no public hearings, no continued public hearings, no new business, and on to old business. We have 06-2020 application for the Breck Autocraft, 63 Newberry Road, request for the agent decision to conduct regulated activities to construct a commercial building in the Upland Review area. Nearest intersection is Thompson Road, map uh, M1 zone, map 93, block 17, and lot 24. Um, who do we have to represent that application? Uh, I, my name is Eric Peterson. I'm an Hi. engineer with Gardner and Peterson Associates out of Tolland. And I'm here with Rick Zulik, who just turned his, his uh, video on. Uh, he's our uh, soil scientist for the project. Um, we were retained by Labrec Autocraft to um, permit the construction of a new building at their property at 63 Newberry Road. And uh, we're requesting a wetland permit for activities located within the Upland Review Area associated with the construction of that building. Um, the, parcel, the parcel is two and a half acres and it's on the north side of Newberry Road. It contains an existing 12,000 square foot building in which they repair classic cars and they're looking to expand that business. They've been in town for about 20 years and it's located in the M1 manufacturing zone. Um, before I get into the details of our proposal, I wanted to have Rick, our soil scientist, go through um, his report and his findings with his uh, wetland delineation. Rick? Yes. Um, can you all hear me? Loud and clear. Yes. Excellent. <clears throat> For the record, my name is Rick Zulick. I'm a soil scientist <clears throat> from Ashford, Connecticut. I have offices in Mansfield and Wellington. I have submitted a four-page report, which I trust you have and had an opportunity to look at, but I will uh, go through a summary uh, just as well. I'd like to start by saying that the entire area here really has been compromised by past disturbances associated with the development of the of the area as we see it. Uh, disturbances prior to the wetland uh, were done long before Mr. Lebrecht purchased that property and it clearly was legal at that time. 
Uh, but for me, it's always difficult as a soil scientist to do a delineation in areas that have been moved around and, and, uh, and disturbed to this extent. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the wetland areas, we have an intermittent water course. Uh, you can, I hope you can see it on your plan. It's uh, labeled IWC1 to IWC7. And that intermittent water course barely meets the criteria of one, but it, it did meet it. Um, that water course is a man-made uh, dug uh, swale, if you will. Um, but it, it, did, it did satisfy the criteria of a water course, so I, I labeled it as such. Um, that serves to lower the water table and, uh, and drain water uh, from the area and has for quite some years. It, it drains to the east. More importantly, we have a predominant wetland that exists to the north of the property. Most of it's off the plan and, and out of the regulated area. But those um, are really uh, wetland proper, if you will, and, and consist of uh, skittico and shaker, poorly drained soils formed in uh, deep clay and silty sediments. To the east, uh, the, which is the area that really is the closest to the proposal. We have eudorothins, which are soils that are formed in uh, areas that have been, have received cutting and filling. Um, they're severely disturbed soils. There are some hydro, some hydric conditions that exist in that area, but understand that as I talk about the values in wetlands, the eastern eudorothins have much less value and functions. Um, than the area would to the north would have. Those functions are groundwater recharge, uh, limited flood alteration, some, some limited sediment and toxin retention potential, some nutrient removal, and uh, some production export, which would be uh, food sources for wildlife, if you will. Um, and there's some limited habitat in there. Um, none of these values and functions will be adversely affected by this uh, proposal um, that includes a sill fence, uh, rain garden, and, and oil water uh, separator. And then in summary, as I said in my report, I'd, it's my opinion that the, hydro, the hydric wetland area, uh, it has minimally function, uh, it's a minimally functioning wetland ecosystem. They exhibit six of, and uh, six wetland functions and one wet wetland value. The development is proposed with an area that's been pre previously disturbed for similar, similar uses. And it's my opinion that the proposed plan will have no significant negative impact to the surrounding wetland areas. I'm certainly happy to answer any specific questions that anyone has regarding this development. Anybody from the board have any questions? Um, not a question, but just uh, if the the previous owner didn't have any uh, violations of the soil um, with all the disturbances that uh, you had mentioned, then how is he able to, well, I don't see where there's a problem for you. Uh, previous disturbance, I think maybe it's maybe you've mis misinterpreted my statement. These previous, there were many previous disturbances that occurred in the entire country regarding wetlands uh, prior to the Wetlands Act, and um, they were legal at the time. It's still, for a soil scientist, there it's still a disturbed area. It's not a naturally occurring wetland as, as we're used to seeing. Therefore, it it makes it difficult for me to to make uh, to put lines in for for wetlands, but I I did well. We brought a machine out there. We did quite a bit of work, and we we sort of we figured it out. So all the soil, you know, you you tested the soil in several spots, and there oh, was yes. no contaminants in it. No, nothing that yeah. I noticed. Good. Um, are there any other questions from any other board members? Uh, this is Rick Osborne. Uh, when that was developed, there was no wetlands commission in town when that property up there was developed. 
I worked in those buildings. That goes way back. Yeah. So if there's no more questions for Rick, I'll just uh, review our proposal, if that's okay. Yep. Okay, um, moving on then. Um, so we're proposing to construct a new building, uh, 9,600 square feet on the east side of the property, uh, approximately the same distance off the road as the existing building. Uh, it'll be a metal building uh, with a roof that slopes from the west to the east um, with a security fence that will be in between the two buildings to prevent any um, anyone from coming into the building or coming into the, onto the site uh, off hours and whatnot. Uh, the front of the new building will have a uh, landscape bed. And I didn't joggle that. Hey Kathy and Dick, we can, we can hear you now. Um, if you guys can just mute. I don't know how. I just got off it. <laughs> okay, just be quiet. Not on it. We've been trying to the last hour with this machine. <laughs> it's my real name. <laughs> All right, we can just hear you guys talking. Okay, so just... Doris, please, I'm not touching that thing with a ten foot pole. <laughs> All right. All right. Go ahead and continue, Eric. Sorry. Um, um, so in the front of the building, we're going to have a, a landscape bed with a shrubbery and plantings. Uh, a sidewalk required by zoning, and then a parking lot, which is in the area of the existing parking lot. Um, that parking lot, we're planting a few couple of trees up front to shade that parking lot and cool down any of the water that falls on that lot. And we're actually reducing the size of the parking out front because in the 20 years that our, our client has owned this property, he's never had that portion of the parking lot filled up with client's vehicles or employee vehicles. So we've, we've reduced the size of the parking on site to be what's minimum requirement required for zoning. Um, and that way we could find some more green space to uh, make up for the, the new building footprint um, towards the back. Um, the drainage from the front portion of the site is going to uh, run off the new parking lot. Uh, through a stone uh, swale and into a new rain garden that we're uh, proposing. It's on the right side of the new building or the east side of the new building. And we're expecting that the water will sit in that rain garden and uh, percolate into the ground. Um, the rain garden includes a sandy subsoil, which will allow that water to infiltrate. And then and any water that doesn't infiltrate will get clean through the grasses that are located in that rain garden and plantings and then exit to the east uh, towards the wetland. Um, we're also proposing to repave any uh, remaining paved areas on the site that are there today. A lot of the pavement there now is really broken up and in poor condition uh, so the owners really would like to do that as well and clean up the site. Um, as uh, Mr. Zulek mentioned, we've included ample uh, erosion and sediment control notes and details and schedules uh, for um, installing those erosion controls and seeding the site once the site, site construction is completed to stabilize um, any disturbed areas. Uh, the staff has, re well, Mr. Norton has reviewed our plans and we set, we've sent in a set of revised plans, uh, I think at the beginning of last week with a memo from myself, just briefly summarizing uh, the changes. Um, and he responded with another memo indicating that we have adequately addressed all of his comments. Uh, so with that, I will uh, leave this up to any questions that the commission might have uh, for me or for Vic Zulek. Questions? If any. Yeah. Can you hear me? No questions. <laughs> I had a question about the rain garden. This is Alan Baker, uh, Commissioner. Um, the, what, is, what size storm would that handle? So a rain garden is sized to handle uh, one inch of rain uh, over the watershed area, over the impervious watershed area going to the rain garden. It's not meant to retain and be like a detention basin, but it's really just meant to clean the water, the first flush of the water coming in. 
So it's going to fill up and flow pretty generally, you know, anytime after that one inch. Correct. Yeah. So we're hoping that we're thinking that the, you know, you get these smaller storms when you might pick up um, sediment or something like that, that all gets inf infiltrated into the rain garden, but then you get a, a big storm. It's just going to, the first part will infiltrate and the rest of it will go right through. So in, in that case, when the, when you're past the one inch of rain, um, how does that oil water separator function at that point in time? Is it still functioning or, or no? The oil water separator has nothing to do with rainwater. It is connected to the sewer system because there are um, floor drains inside the building. So it'll only be taking, um, call it water, from, if, let's say they like rinse off a car in the building or something like that, and it goes in the floor drain, that is a protection for the town's sewer system. It has nothing to do with um, stormwater runoff at all. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was looking at the wrong arrow. I, I see that. Yeah, I apologize. Yep. And there's no catch basins um, on the pavement that I'm seeing. Is that correct? That is correct. We thought it would be better off to um, allow water to run naturally. And we're directing it through a stone riprap channel to get to the riprap, I mean, to get to the rain garden. Okay. It's going to be very similar to how it is now. As far as, you know, our, we submitted calculations to Mr. Norton. We have a, hardly anything of, a, of an increase of stormwater runoff. It's a negligible amount, 0.1 CFS or something. So it's, yeah. Um, I have some questions. This is Jamie. Uh, does the rain garden area require periodic maintenance, uh, whether it be in two to three years, three to five years, um, you know, as sediments or other materials accumulate, does it need to be, uh, you know, removed? Does, does anything, any obstructions need to be removed over time? And um, how would the, the property owner deal with that if it need, is necessary? The most frequent maintenance is mowing it, you know, once or twice a year to make sure that you don't get woody, woody vegetation in there. Um, if you, I wouldn't expect a lot of sediment uh, being accumulated in there. People don't really um, sand their parking lots or the towns don't really sand the roads anymore like they used to. And this is a really small area that's heading to the, uh, the rain garden. Um, so we would just recommend that the, you know, he keeps an eye on it and make, and if it does, it does accumulate that he can, that he removes it. And we could certainly add notes to the plan uh, accordingly if that's a preference of the commission. Thank you. Yeah, I think we would be interested. We typically do like to have a maintenance schedule in the plan so we can follow up down the road if uh, things get clogged up and it's not functioning correctly anymore. Not a problem at all. Uh, so Dick, I got one question. Can you yep. mind? Okay. Uh, the original question, you show a proposed building and you show a proposed future building. Was the computations done for just the proposed building or for both of them? Uh, that's for both. It is for both. Yeah. And the reason, um, the only reason it's shown that way is because um, once the owner prices this project out, he might have to reduce his scope and that's how he's going to do it. So well, we, we were advised by um, Ruben to go in with the full size of the building for our wetland application, for our planning and zoning application. And that's when he, when he goes to get a building permit and the building smaller, well, shouldn't be a problem for anyone else at that point. Right. Thank you. I uh, kind of interested in that. And I think the approval should state that it is for the full building, including the proposed addition so that if he does anything does mess up you won't have to come back and go through this whole process again appreciate that yeah. and it would just be pavement abutting the building kind of the same as it is in the north if that building addition was not added yeah it would just we just take that little there, there is a garage off the end and we just slide that down okay I don't have any other questions. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions, comments? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve uh, application 
Mrs. Allen, I'll take I'll make a motion to uh, approve permit number 06-2020 Labreck Autocraft 633 Newberry Road um, for a permit. Um, and with the normal conditions and as well as the addition of the maintenance schedule of the rain garden to be put on the plans. And noting that this is for the full building um, in case it doesn't need to be as big, it's still approved. Yep, hopefully they can get it done within the period of time. Yes. <laughs> Good idea. I'll second it. Did Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, you guys are good to go. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All the time. And uh, it was nice to somewhat meet you all. <laughs> you as well. <laughs> good luck. Good to see you guys again. Take yep. care. You too, Rick. Bye. Bye. All right, moving on to permit 08 2020 for Brian Herbert, 133 Phelps Road. Request to return area to Elan. Uh, Meg, bring in minor fill. Um, 100, under 100 cubic yards and add landscape boulders and up Booner View area. Nearest intersection is Phelps and Tromley Road, R3 zone, map 54, block 20, lot 48. I think he's still on the call, yes. Um, I know that Lenny was also working with this uh, applicant uh, last month. So if Brian or Lenny have any updates or anything they wanted to add to this based on our questions and kind of concerns from last meeting. Anybody? Howdy, howdy. Lenny. It's Len, hey. Um, I mean, the gentleman kind of held off what he was doing. Uh, I know there was a question about what's with the less than 100 cubic yards. Well, he's not even going to bring in 100, if, if that. He's just, the only material he's bringing in is topsoil to dress up the area that he's regraded a little bit. I, I realize he's, he started without a permit, which is a no-no, but he does have his silk fence up. I, I was honestly, I was going to stop by there today and I just didn't get there and I apologize, but he, he seems to have been behaving. And uh, I did talk with the state drainage engineer who was talking uh, regarding the culvert that goes under uh, Phelps Road, which is Route 191. Mm -hmm. And she did, didn't, my rec her recollection was that the, which is what I believe is the limit of his work is going to be, I guess it would be um, uh, west or north of that little water course that goes un under the road. He's not, he's not blocking or, or disturbing anything there. She believes that there might be uh, something further downstream that is keeping the water from flowing properly. Um, okay. And she hasn't had a chance to look to, to fully look into it yet. She's looking into a few other things. Um, in town. Um, yes, Tommy, Geister's Plaza. <laughs> um, so uh, that's where it is. I mean, I really don't have any any great heartburn over, over the project. I think, you know, if Brian just, you know, throws some topsoil down and see and mulches it with some hay, it'd be fine. Yep. Um, I think our only concern that we had from last meeting was the amount of fill that he had already brought in so that total he's not going over that hundred because it wasn't clear as to if the hundred cubic yards was in total for the project or in total for kind of his, his fix from the violation. So we just want to make sure that it was in total from the whole project. And I think he said he wasn't sure exactly how much fill had been brought in currently. Um, but just to make sure that he's not exceeding in these kind of two rounds of, of cleaning up and putting his yard back together. Um, Brian may want to hop on, but it was my understanding that some of, you know, a good deal of the material that's been moved around in there, it was actually moved around on site. That, that oh. there, wasn't a there wasn't a tremendous amount. He was doing some regrading on site and he, sh he could chime in. I, I, I believe that's what he told me was that he was, kind of regrading and, and really the 
the, the material that was coming in was really basically going to be topsoil. Brian, if you're there, can you confirm that? You just need to unmute Brian. You had muted yourself earlier. Well, apparently we can't hear Brian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rest assured that if you know, given if you give him the permit, that uh, between Joe and I, we'll keep an eye on what's going on. There you go. We can hear you now, Brian. Oh, there he is. Okay. All right, I'm on me. Yeah. Fuck traffic. All right, I'm not good with technology here. I got tractors going by, but I do believe I brought in less than fifty yards of material before. Okay. I hauled it in a little four F four hundred and fifty. I didn't never even brought in big trucks. Um, so I believe I know I freighted the shit out of them, but I believe I brought in less than fifty yards of material. Okay. So in accordance with the zoning re requirements, you can't really bring in any more than like fifty additional cubic yards. Right, but I probably need about three triaxles. I mean, just even if I paint it, I do need to bring in a little more topsoil in the back, but I don't think that matters to you guys just to um, fix my yard here. But that's, I mean, eight, 10 yards. Well, well, understand it's- You're still in the upland review area. You, yeah, you need, you, 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 yeah, all right, you don't really, well, I'll just, actually, I'll I don't know it. the zoning requirement. I mean, it's a hundred, when did you bring it in? I think it's a hundred cubic yards a year. So if, if the Oh, it was last year. I haven't brought in material since October. I don't need much. I need, I mean, four, maybe four triaxle loads. So what's that, 60, 60 yards or less? I'm probably not even going to buy well, that much. Maybe well, 40 I, yards. I, I guess if you brought in, my interpretation would be if you brought in whatever you brought in last year, you, you're likely entitled to bring in an additional hundred if you need to but it'd be better if you didn't let's put it that right way. i wouldn't <laughs> hundred yards of topsoil is eighteen hundred dollars so so i would recommend to you brian that before you start material in, um assuming you get this permit um why don't you call my office to let me know when you're bringing material in Either myself or joe could go out and you know see what you're bringing in for material we can we can tell by the piles and the truckloads. We can estimate what you're bringing in. Gotcha. Okay. I uh, can't get trucking slips and with trucking companies. Okay. Um, do any of the board members have any comments um, for this one? Yeah, Dick. Uh, okay. I. Uh, why don't we give them three triaxle loads of topsoil and the work to be done and seeded before October 1st or wait till next year if you can. That's plenty of time, but after October 1st, you're gonna have erosion problems and all kinds of problems. If oh no, I'll seed now, even though I'm, I missed my seed period, I'll seed now anyways. No, yeah. I'll just water the hell out of it. Yeah, that's, that's the best thing you can do. It's pretty damp there. I think it'll water itself fairly well. But uh, right, yeah, I don't think I'll be watering too much. <laughs> but uh, it's just uh, you know you start going after October first, and the grass never takes right anyway, and then you got erosion all winter. Yeah, I don't want any of that, and I can put in hay mat between my boulders and my property line if you feel it's necessary. Yeah. You know, I with between my boulders and my silt fence, I will put down hay mat if necessary. I don't know what the other members think, but uh, that's pretty flat in there. I'm sure if you seed it and get the grass growing, the soap fence will take care of any uh, intrusion into the wetlands. As long as you maintain your soap fence until your grass is mowable. Yep. I would agree with that. Perfect. Um, anybody else have any comments before we approve? All right. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve application 8-2020 with our standard conditions. Okay, I guess I get stuck doing it. Uh, I make a motion to approve application 08-2020, Brian Hebert, 133 Phelps Road, 
request a return area lawn may bring in minor amount of fill. We uh, modified it to uh, three triaxes, which is uh, approximately 50 yards and add landscape bold as an upland review area and uh, nearest intersection Phelps and Tromley R3 zone map 054 block 20 lot 048 and work to be completed by October 1st. Second. With, this, with, with this our 14 standard conditions, sorry. Yeah. And I would also make a suggestion to have a note in there to have um, Lenny and Joe just keep an eye on the amount of fill since Lenny has um, mentioned that, if we can just have that on the uh, um, motion. Yeah, that, oh, definitely so amended. Okay. Uh, is there a Osborne second? second? Osborne seconds. Any further discussion? Just want to point out to Brian to make sure, you know, one of the, uh, one of the conditions is to let uh, the, the town planning officer, in this case, Lenny and Joe, uh, know before you get started. You know, I know you've kind of already started, but you know, when you, when you do get back to work on this, then uh, just give them a heads up so they can double check that everything's in order and work with you on I it. I sure will. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, you are good to move forward. And like Alan said, please work with Lenny and Joe to get uh, the fill and stuff uh, looked at. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Brian. All right, moving on to miscellaneous and informal commission discussion. Uh, Desri LLC for the gravel pit, solar one, two, and three, uh, and the gravel pit property ranging from Apothecary Hall to NORCAP to back of 120 and Markowski on Plantation Road for a solar development. And I think Jason, you're talking about this. I'm sorry, Rebecca, did you uh, call on me there? I had yeah, are you going to be the one kind of talking about this? Yeah, so um, Desri LLC uh, Gravel Pit Solar 1, 2, and 3 are, um, that's a development that's going to be going on um, the Charbonneau Pit, part of uh, Botticello's property, part of Rybeck's property, and on a Markowski that um, is going to be a large grid oh, um, that when fully built out um, will be at or about 120 megawatts, which will make it the largest grid scale solar development in New England when it's built. Um, we have um, a draft application submitted to the town from the folks at Desri um, that they're planning on submitting to the siting council for application. This is, importantly, this is a siting council cited project, so there is no local jurisdiction involved in it. Um, the state is supreme and supersedes local jurisdiction on wetlands and zoning uh, regulations. But um, they have been good partners to us so far, um, and I have every reason to believe that that'll continue. Um, so they have agreed to have an informal conversation with the Planning and Zoning Commission um, at the Planning and Zoning Commission's meeting next Tuesday, the 9th. Um, and Chairman Ouellette from Planning and Zoning has extended an invitation to the members of this board to participate in that informal discussion. So if folks have any questions about the project specifically, after their presentation, they'll have their experts that are available at that uh, meeting on that evening to answer any questions that we have. Um, their intention is to submit the application to the siting council with the town's feedback by uh, the end of this month. Um, and hopefully they'll be constructing uh, that project starting in the spring of next year. Um, any specific questions I can answer? I just have one that doesn't really make a difference to anything, but the two solar fields that are currently there, is it the same uh, ownership or are those completely owned separately and not together? So those, uh, you're talking about the two solar developments or two solar installations that are on the NORCAP property, the old ones. Are yeah. The, um, that's also on the Botticella property, but it's on the southeast piece of it. Um, this is going to be on the northwest piece of the Botticella property. Most of the Charbonneau property Rybex and Markowski's. Um, the NORCAP project is operated by a company called Lodestar. Okay. Uh, and that actually is a VNM project, a virtual net metering project. They sell the energy credits that are generated from that 
site to the town of South Windsor and the town of South Windsor uses that to offset their energy costs. I do vaguely remember that. Okay. When, when we were going through the negotiation phase with, um, I call them North Light Energy, but it's Desri. When we were going through the negotiation phase with them, um, doing a, PP, a PPA was, or a power purchase agreement, a PPP, um, was something that we had discussed um, and dismissed because it would have lowered the per megawatt they were agreeable to make to the town over time. Uh, and so we made the determination that we'd rather have the tax revenue than the PPP uh, with the, the notion that I get, you know, it, before COVID-19 anyway, I was getting one company a week that was knocking on the door looking to do some sort of a power purchase agreement with the town. So there are, there are plenty of fish in that, in that sea. Um, it made more sense for us to take the economic development dollars uh, than to do the energy cost offset. Plus, we're still in a, and if Len's still on the line, he can chime in, but uh, I think we're still in a five-year power purchase agreement with, um, uh, through CCM. And so we're, I think, you're in year three of that. So it's not really the ideal time for us to do a PPA. Okay. Um, but no, so that's, Lodestar is a separate company. They're a competitor of um, Northlight Energy. You're correct on the, on the uh, our power purchase agreement. Jason, we but, have you know, a year I, and a half, two years left. Okay. Yeah, we, we have regular conversations uh, at a staff level when these companies pop up to, to review any proposals that they have to make the determination of whether it's worth, uh, far down the road, it's worth going with each of them. Uh, the folks that I incorporate into those conversations are um, Ruben, Len, Joe Sauerhofer, Helen Tots, and myself. Uh, I'm at it from a number of different perspectives. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with the tax stabilization agreement, but Helen is still in the room. Sometimes it doesn't have to do with local matters, but Ruben is still involved in the conversation. And the reason being is it makes more sense to have the same team involved in each of the conversations. So there's continuity of knowledge between the conversations. So that's the solar team. And, and when we, when one of these things pops up in whatever capacity, we all meet and, and discuss and review. Anybody have any questions for Jason on the potential project? Yeah, Jason, um, I was wondering, is, uh, I was just looking up on the internet here. It says one megawatt will uh, provide electricity to 400 to 900 homes a year. So 133 megawatts, that's uh, over 100,000 people. So that's really significant uh, and really good. Uh, are you going to have overhead lines or do you have cables and or do you need permits for overhead cables and all that stuff? Those are good questions, Kurt. Um, those will be determinations that are made at the siting council level, but there is existing infrastructure on the property already so they can do a, a direct connect to the grid. Um, they'll have to, to build some of those substations. I think they're planning calls for six or eight of them over the course of the parcel. Um, Largely, they're going to be out of view um, and they're going to be connecting where there's already an existing connection. The other major upside to this project for those familiar with the parcel is that for 20 years, um, that's been an attractive nuisance for all kinds of illicit activity, most notably uh, illegal dirt biking and ATV use. Um, and as part of the federal requirements for projects like this, they will put a gigantic fence around the, um, the project so that that nuisance will go away. And when we were doing the negotiation, um, the value for that, you know, being able to eliminate an attractive nuisance that's been a problem for the town for two decades um, that we have not been able to stem otherwise, there's a value to that. And, um, you know, that, that's one of, the, one of the, the aspects about the project that I'm particularly jazzed about. Um, I think one thing that I would say is I'm definitely interested in attending that meeting. So if I could get the agenda emailed to me so I can see it and be able to click on the, the Zoom link for the meeting, I would appreciate that. So I think if we can send it to the our commission um, for an invite, I think that would be nice. Yeah, yes, Ru please. Ruben, Ruben can take care of that as well. Will do. Thank you. You bet. All right. Um, do we have any agent decisions to discuss? We don't. Okay. Um, status reports. 
Nothing, violations, nothing that I know of, anything that's come up? It started last week, so, I mean, I haven't seen oh, it. That's true, too, yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything from Lenny, so assuming everything is, is good on that front. Um, seminar. Uh, everything is far, yes, I believe everything's good on that front, and this will be my last meeting. I'm from wetlands and planning and zoning. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Len, so much. Thank you for stepping in. We definitely appreciate the assistance, especially at our last meeting. And then you will continue to work with Brian, um, at least on that application, so. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so we have no conferences, seminars, or trainings. I'm not sure of anything that's like virtual. Um, anybody, Peg, has there been any, any news? Not that I know of. Okay. Uh, any correspondence? No correspondence. All right, any general board discussion? I got a couple things. Okay, go ahead. Unless anybody else wants to go. Go for it. <laughs> so um, I know uh, prior to the COVID taking us out of the town hall, there was a couple things that we were working on. Uh, one was there was supposed to be the, the new training materials coming out from the state and I'm sure maybe they're held up a little bit too, but I'll, uh, unless somebody of Jamie or Kurt has gotten in with like Darcy Winters, uh, I, I, I would volunteer to talk to her and see if they got that done send her an email or something, but I think we should uh, follow up on the wetlands training, uh, the, the new stuff and, and make sure everybody goes through it again because it's been a little bit of time since we have. Ellen, that reminds me, they did just do a press release about training being available online. Um, and I, once you know we're done here, I can look for that press release and that web link and share it with the, the group. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, because uh, when I met her, I ran into her at that conference that I went to, um, the CACUBA conference this or this spring or this winter. She said it was imminent and it was coming. And, and um, so I'd just like to not forget that. But then the other thing I had was um, the other thing we were working on was the fee ordinance. And we had decided to, to give it a rest until we were to make sure that everybody could be at the meetings. And now that I see that Rick and and, and Dick and everybody is here uh, and we have our full complement for the most part. I'd like to get that back on the agenda for next month and, and get going. I know we were pretty close. Um, so maybe in our packets, we could have everything that we, a, a, a re, uh, reintroduction of all the stuff that we actually have already gotten just in one packet. So um, I know I have all the stuff, but maybe not everybody's got it. We could put that all together so we'll have a starting point uh, to read up on before the next meeting and kind of refresh our memory where we were. I think we just had uh, some input that, that Dick was interested in, in changing on the ordinance. And I think maybe Rick had something as well uh, to add to the ordinance. And then we, we needed to get down with what we wanted to do with fees and get that vetted. So I think those are the only two or three things that we had left. But I'd like to kind of see that through and get that in the hopper so it's ready when we can have a town meeting to get it voted on. Yep, that sounds good to me. Um, Jason, is there any near decisions when the town hall will reopen and meetings will be able to uh, happen in person? No. Oh. Yeah. So I'll, I'll expand, expand on that a bit, but that's the... That is the short answer. Um, <laughs> Fine. The, the governor's executive order seven, I've lost track, uh, <laughs> T, I think, okay. um, seven TT increased the size for um, in-person meetings indoors from five to 10. So that's double. Yep. Um, and outdoor meetings to 25. But um, there's just, I don't see that happening a ways yet. We're going to have to figure out, um, in, in terms of town hall, how we even open it for tax collection come July 2nd. Um, because you can't rightly ask people to pay their taxes and then not give them a means to do it. Um, so I, I will say it's not going to be this month. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've heard from a couple other towns that they're going to open two days a week, and then in another month, they're going to open three days a week and, like, slowly start. So, their some are doing it by appointment. Some are doing it, you know, uh, only for, you know, a specific hour of the day. Some are just saying we're ready, um, but we're not ready. Um, yeah. There's there are still some uh, staff safety measures that, that I want to make sure are in place before we open the doors to the public. Um, and, you know, it... it Part of it is a matter of uh, procuring the stuff that you need to procure. Yeah. Uh, it's difficult to get all of the PPE that you need to provide employees a safe place to go. And I don't see how you can rightly um, do that while we're still offering almost all of our munis municipal services. Um, I I'm, we're not there yet. Yep. That's fine. Don't, don't I, did, I did just recall town staff this week. So this week was the first time since uh or since about st patrick's day that um we've had a full complement of town staff in town buildings um the only exception being the senior center uh, okay and they're going to be two weeks behind but the center itself isn't opening probably until the fall yeah okay yeah i got one comment on this what al brought up if i may yeah, uh, go ahead. i really don't think we should start on the key ordinance until we can have a real honest to gosh meeting where the public can participate freely because it's just going to look like we're trying to ramrod something through when they don't know about it i mean we can talk and talk but uh, i really think we need to do this as a truly open process the way it's been done for 250 years in this town well, it's still an open process. Not that important. It's not people laying in the street dying because we don't have this ordinance. Uh, I really, I really don't think we're doing a, a complete service to the uh, taxpayers and the voters of this town if we uh, go and discuss it online, where half of us can't get at it. That's that's just my thoughts. Do what you, what the majority wants. Yeah, you know, all I was thinking, Dick, was just to get the homework done, you know, get all the, you know, all our ducks in a row. And then, yeah, once we get, you know, back in the town hall, then we can start having, you know, we'll need to have a public hearing, you know, and, and whatnot, um, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. That, so we, that stuff obviously has to happen. And I agree. And, and I think it's really important to make sure that people actually understand it. So they have a chance of voting intelligently about it. Um, but I do want to just get the, I want to get our, our work done as far as you had some specific things that you wanted to add. I want to get that, you know, we started talking about it. We can talk about that now, uh, just like we did. I mean, prior to going on to Zoom, it was just us in the room talking about it anyway, you know? So that part of it, I think we can do, but I absolutely agree to go beyond that, we need to be back in town hall. But the public can still walk in at any time at our meeting and and participate it's called public participation which is nice. i mean not that they're going to like this at all but yeah it, people do that too dick you know in this i just don't want to alienate everybody i mean they feel alienated enough now that they're off in the world held up by sticks were held up by regulations for greenwich that really don't apply to anything much east of the river it's uh there's like two states up there it's a whole all different state of Connecticut out there. Yeah. And we come to the realization, but I just don't want to put something through and then be accused of putting it through without people really knowing. I wonder what I we still I, have to go through the public hearing and that is really ideally going to be done when it's in person. That needs to be public. No hurry for that, but we do want to keep moving on to just stall like it has before. Okay. So Whatever. I think doing the homework again and getting it kind of back in our brains would be helpful um, to hopefully continue to move forward with it. So when the time does come that we're back in person, we can just keep going with it. Um, so anybody else from the board have anything to discuss? Jamie, I saw your email come in for the training stuff. Yeah, I only sent it to a couple of you guys. Um, I, there's just so many names and email addresses, but uh, do feel free to share with whomever. Okay. Um, all right, well, we can move on to public participation. Tom, <laughs> anything to say? <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, do, okay. do you want me to unmute him? 
Yeah, unmute him. <laughs> <laughs> he was shaking his head. <laughs> Good, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Kathy. Anytime. You call me if you need All right. Well, I would entertain a motion to adjourn then. Bye bye, kid. I'll make a motion. We adjourn. The uh, motion by I Rick. Want... Who's a second? Dick. Dick seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Aye. Good night, kids. Good night, Bye. 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 Thank you.